Are we ready, Billy? Oh, okay. Yep. seated. Welcome family and friends of Emmanuel Baptist Church. We are so glad that you are joining us, whether it's here or online with us. Uh, we do have a couple of announcements I want to remind everybody of. And um, first of all, in case you did not know, um, our leaders and other leaders got together. And I know we had vacation by school scheduled uh, we decided right now, because of all the uncertainty of things, we are going to cancel that, okay? Um, of course, we knew, had to cancel our men's camp out. And, of course, based upon information, things some of those things may be rescheduled later. We will let you know. Um, we do appreciate you being patient with us. <laughs> There's so much uncertainty, and it seems like things change just about every day. I will keep you updated. As I mentioned last week, I keep um, in touch with Governor Parsons on um, the health department and different things. So we're staying up on um, information to the very best of our ability. Okay, we will let you know those changes as they occur. Um, some things I want to remind you about, be patient with each other. Okay, some will want to wear masks. Some will not wear masks. That's all right. Don't be offended. <laughs> all right. Take your hands back and don't shake hands with you or hug you. Don't be offended at that. Doesn't mean that they're mad. Okay. So let's just be patient with each other during all those times. And again, we're not going to be passing the offering plate. Um, the offering plates will be yours. Okay. So keep that in mind as well. For those that are online, you can still send them in to us. Okay. Um, maybe we'll get that address up on the screen later, but. Uh, we want you to know that is still available as well. All right. Um, let's see. The Casting Crown concert is rescheduled. Remember, we were supposed to do that a few weeks ago. Scheduled right now for October 1st. Okay. So those of you that already have tickets, okay, um, I guess do they just hang on to those tickets? Okay. So hang on to those tickets. Don't lose them. For uh, <laughs> All right. It's scheduled October 1st. Um, can they still order more tickets? Okay. All right. All right. And ladies, right now the women um, 
of Joy. It looks like you're still planning on doing that in Branson, um, October 2nd through 4th. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, who do they need to see about information for that? Okay, either look it up online or see Brenda for information about that. But um, Okay, cannot order tickets sometime in June, the first part of July, so you need to work on that now, okay? So get that information as well. Um, don't forget at 6.30 on Thursday, we do our weeknight Bible study, uh, our midweek Bible study, rather. Um, it's on GoToMeeting. You can, those of you that are on our messenger, okay, you, the link will be on there. Jackie does a good job of sending those out ahead of time. I know there's been some technical difficulties, especially with the storm. Happened. And then as soon as it got over, it stormed at our house. Um, so we got done just that night. Um, so but we want to give you those information. Also, our service, you can go on to YouTube, capital ISBC, and small letters Pomona. Okay. ISBC Pomona, you can go on Facebook, find us, you can catch it updated later on that it's um, recorded, the same on our web page, okay, so there are links on all those to get to our services, again, right now there's been some technical difficulty, um, hopefully they will be taken care of here pretty soon, all right, do we have any other announcements? All right, <laughs> we're going to sing out of our Heavenly Highways hymn book. Hymn number 300, Glad Reunion Day. I tell you what, want to be great when we get to be with all ones we can't even get to see right now. Man, I tell you what, I was looking at some of the words to these. To be with Jesus who gave his life for us and praise him for all of eternity. What a wonderful day that's going to be. So let's stand, sing hymn number three. You, there's some of you that know this song. If you want to come up and help us, you are more than welcome. All right. be small in number today but man you guys are singing good all right and you look good all right well most of you I'm, I'm, Keegan you look good too man 407 
because he lives. Aren't you glad that because Jesus lives, we can face anything this world throws at us, COVID or anything? I've discovered no matter what happens in this life, we have God's Holy Spirit, don't we? We have his power. You know, that's a promise he has made us is that he is always with us. He never leaves us or forsakes us. The Bible tells us that where two or three are gathered, there he is in their midst, doesn't it? You know, and it doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. Because Christ is with us, because his Holy Spirit is, indwells in us and when god's people meet together you know what he is here he is here and because he is here it's awesome isn't it awesome to be together and to be in god's presence we want to sing this morning all in this place you sing with us <clears throat> See the fullness of 
God, we do exalt you this morning. Father, I find it ironic that this coronavirus in Spanish means crown. But Father, there is no one that holds the crown except you. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who is above everything else. So many times we put ourselves on. We put situations and our problems on the throne but father help us this morning to exalt you to put you in the proper place to be high and lifted up and that father we are simply your creation father as a nation as people as individuals rest your law so greatly best we know how we've been calling our people and our nation to repentance father that is the only solution to all the problems of this world it's government or politics or economy but it is christ ruling and reigning 
Help us to submit our Father, may we find our peace, comfort, and our strength from you in these days that we have before us. Father, we pray this for your honor, for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to turn to a very familiar passage, and you'll find here in just a moment, but Psalm 23. And I, I, I've got to tell you, this has been one of the most difficult weeks I've had in a long time. Um, for the last week and a half or two weeks, and, I, and I, I don't know if it's this being shut up because I've been able to go to work. In fact, I have to go to work because of my job working on it. Um, but I have seen things in the last and I can't talk about one of them because it's on the news. at the drop of the hat. I don't know what's been going on. But a lot of the change, we are used to normalcy, aren't we? And nothing is normal. They can call it the new normal all they want, but it's not normal, <laughs> okay? It's new. It's what is going on? The, the virus itself, the, the fear that it's causing, and the panic, and the things that it's causing in the economic turmoil, and jobs and small businesses especially facing such difficult times and and then all the other things have you discovered that even though we've been forced to take a little bit of a rest in a sense and by the way it's not rest just staying at home during all this is not rest is it um it's anything but rest um, some of us have honeydew lists that have gotten bigger but even just sitting is not because you're passive doesn't mean Sometimes it's stressful, and sometimes emotional things and stress can be more fatiguing than physical stuff, okay? But have you discovered that life still goes on? Man, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to in the last week or so that are having some very difficult times in their family lives. Prodigals are still prodigals. Wayward marriages are still there. Financial struggles have been increased. Health problems. I talked to Virgil this week, and Virgil, by the way, is doing good. Remember, Virgil was diagnosed with cancer right before all this happened. Doesn't have to see the doctor till August. So we got good news there. But other things still go on. I've discovered Satan has not rested one bit during this he's not been on vacation but you know what neither has our god neither has our god i love romans 8 20 it says he takes all things and works them together for good okay satan may want to use all this stuff as bad but god can turn it around and make something tremendous out of it so this week in you know, and then not getting to see Hadley and all this. Man, I tell you what, I've been an emotional wreck. I really have. I've been a big crybaby. And that's not new for me, but anyway, it's been worse than normal. Um, I just see a picture or somebody talks about Hadley and I start crying. And Jane's like, what in the world? <laughs> just looking at me like, oh my goodness. And, and I'm about to do it now. Okay, anyway. So it's been this in the last couple weeks and I don't think this I don't think God does anything by accident um, Max Cato is one of my favorite authors and Max Cato I read a lot of his books but he's got some video things first he got a devotional pops up I read every morning just about but then he's got some devotionals that have been coming out and he's been in Psalm 23 man I've preached Psalm 23 hundreds and hundreds of times at funerals and different things and I started doing some research, so I, I put in there, I'll give credit as due. This is not original with me, so much from Max Cato, um, Matt Chandler, Brian Bills, 
verse that I've been studying. I tell you what, I've learned some things about Psalm 23 in the last week or so that, oh, man, it's helped me get through this. Okay, and some things I think that you're going to say, wow, this is cool. Because guess what? As city slickers, we don't understand Psalm 23. Okay, not that we're city slickers. We're out here in rural country. Okay, however, how many of you have raised sheep? That's what I thought. None of us. Okay, sheep are way different. Okay, um, there's some things. Did you know the Bible refers to us as sheep nearly 200 times in the Bible? Over 200. And by the way, let me say this. Every time he does, it's usually not a, um, a compliment. Because <laughs> um, sheep are pretty stupid animals, I found out. Okay? They need 24-7 attention from the shepherd. 23, I, w- I was looking at some things, and um, I-, I didn't realize this, but um, I'd forgotten Abraham Lincoln read it to cure his blues. Did you know Abraham Lincoln failed many, many times before he was successful in life. And every time he would fail and get discouraged, he would read Psalm 23. You remember when September, when 9-11 happened back in 2001, our president, George Bush at the time, read Psalm 23 to our nation. Okay? I was reading in one th- reading this week. It said, if we want to experience the calm of the psalm, I thought that was pretty clever, the calm of the psalm, then we've got to understand it a little bit better than we do. If you find Psalm 23, go ahead and stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. Most of you know this by heart, but it'll be up on screen. Just we're all saying the same version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God add the blessing on the reading of his word. You may be seated. David, the author of the 23rd Psalm, of course, we know from his youth, David was a shepherd. Something interesting here, though, David writes this psalm from the perspective of the sheep, doesn't he? Not from the experience of being a shepherd, but he writes it as if he is one of the sheep. Gives a whole different perspective in here. If we want the calm, okay, first of all, we have got to make sure that we become one of the shepherd's sheep. We need to, see, he starts off, and here's, it, there so those of you follow along in your outline in your bulletin, don't get don't panic when you see the length of that outline. We're not doing it all today. If we did, we'd be here next week. But um, we're going to do this in three parts. So each point we're doing for one point a Sunday. So I want us to look at first of all some things I want us to learn about the shepherd this morning from the perspective of the sheep. So number one that we're going to look at today, the shepherd provides for his sheep. What all does he provide? Again, if you're looking in your bulletin and following along in the outline there, the first thing the shepherd provides for us is this, a relationship. Notice how he starts off this this psalm. He says, when the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay? Now, that word is a little bit different, translated, okay, in the way it means... It means that we have lack of nothing. We have lack of nothing. It's not that we're just careless and don't want anything. It means we don't have want of anything. He is our shepherd. Why? Because the sheep can't provide anything for themselves, can they? They are defenseless. 
they're not predators, so they can't go out and get their own food. As you're going to see in some of these things, these sheep, if they eat, they will just gorge themselves to death. or They'll feed themselves on water to death. They have to be made to rest. They have to be made to do this. They have to be made to eat. So left to themselves, they would be dead. They would die very quickly if they were left to themselves. So when the Lord is our shepherd, though, and I like this first one, it's relationship. John, Gospel, chapter 10, Jesus talks about himself being the good shepherd a lot in there. And he talks about the sheep that are mine know my voice. And they communicate. One of the things I've discovered, a sheep starts early understanding and listening and recognizing the voice of the shepherd. Isn't that interesting? A sheep. We wouldn't think of a sheep. I mean, how many cows, when you go out and call a cow, do your cows know your voice and come to your voice? Oh, sometimes they do, don't they? Okay, well, there you go. And especially they see, hear a horn honk or something like that, and they see the truck come, they, they'll come running. Okay, fed. And we know what dogs do, but a lot of animals, they don't distinguish between those. You know what, what the number one question I get asked as a pastor, and this happened even when I was a youth minister, and not just by youth, but by adults. How do I know when it's God speaking to me? You know what that has taught me? Is we've got a lot of Christians in our world that don't know the voice of the shepherd. It's pretty disturbing when you think about it. That we don't know the voice of the shepherd. Guys, and don't get me wrong, don't think, well, I'm worse, worse off than anybody else because I don't know. Guys, you have all kinds of voices speaking to you every day, don't you? Okay? We've got our own mind, our own flesh, which <laughs> just deceives us and plays tricks on us all the time, doesn't it? Okay, speaks to us, telling us to go this way. But you know what? Our flesh is selfish, isn't it? Our flesh looks out for number one. We had that voice speaking to us. Okay? Man, we got the voice of everybody else that are experts on everything, right? And they want to make sure they give you their advice, right? And they're always right. So they say, okay, so you've got all kinds of voices speaking to you. Do you know we also had the voice of this world? And I mean, in a different sense, the philosophy of this world is in opposition to Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Have you discovered that yet? Guys, it is. Things being taught in school are being taught as fact and they contradict the Bible. They've rewritten books. They've changed our history books. Do you know they've taken all reference out of our history books from our founding fathers? I was watching the documentary History Channel, which by the way is terrible, okay? Um, and it was about our founding fathers, the Revolutionary War. I love studying about it, reading about our founding fathers. One of my favorite that hangs up in my office is, is all of our founding fathers praying before they signed the Declaration. Man, that's inspiring. You won't find that in any of Congress or houses. Okay? Anyway, the documentary on the History Channel had every one of our fathers drunk and went. Which is documented, by the way. Um, is in the opposition to God and to his kingdom. You've got that sticks with you. In a sense, our kids are growing up being brainwashed, guys. That's why they think so different than us. There's not just a generational gap or there's a whole philosophical gap between generations now. It's not just age and generation. It's a philosophical gap that has been put there on purpose by it's not enough, then guess who else we have speaking to us? The old devil, don't we? before. We have all kinds of voices speaking to us each and every day. And if we are not in God's word, in prayer and in Bible study, guess what? 
you are going to have a hard time distinguishing God's voice from all those others. Because, you know, the Bible says the devil can disguise himself as an angel of light. He can speak to you and make it sound like he's got the answers and got it all figured out. And in man's wisdom, it may seem right. But doesn't God say his ways are higher than our ways? Yeah, what well, makes sense according to mankind, man, God's will. It probably is not God's voice. So how do we discuss? And recognize the shepherd's voice, we've got to spend time with him. We have to. There's no one, two, three easy step and outline that I can give you to recognize God's voice. I wish there was. But it comes simply from spending time in his word and in prayer. Okay? I can remember when I first started hunting, okay, I had to learn to hunt on my own. So I'll never forget, man, there'd be times I'd be out there and I'd be sitting on this on the ground behind, by this tree and I would hear these voices or these, these movements and stuff in the woods and every one of them, man, I just knew that was a big old deer getting ready to come up behind me. Man, I turn around, get my bow, and it's a squirrel. Did you know those little critters make more noise than just about anything in the woods except an armadillo? An armadillo out and move that squirrel any time. But you know what happened after years and years of hunting? I can sit behind that tree now, and I don't even have to turn around, and I can tell you, and I'm, I'm right almost every time. Say, well, that's a squirrel. Oh, I hear a turkey. Oh, there's a whole flock of turkey I can hear. They have a distinct noise. A coyote has a distinct gait. I can hear a coyote, and I can tell you almost, almost every time. Coyote. And then I hear that soft, quiet tiptoe through there. That's a deer. And I'm right almost every time. I'll get fooled once in a while, but not very often. But you know how I got to that point? From being out in those woods a lot, hearing all those voices, recognizing those things. Guys, God wants us to be so in tune with him. He wants us to spend so much time with him. We recognize his voice. We know his voice when he's speaking to us. And just like Isaiah says, most of the time, guess what? It's that small, still voice, isn't it? Most of the time, that's it. We've got to be quiet. We've got to be quiet. We've got to listen. We've got time with His relationship is the most important thing in our lives. To, for a sheep to survive, he has to be in tune with the shepherd. He has to be on the same page with him. He has to recognize his voice because guess what? Now, our God can. Our God can pay attention to every single one of us and not miss a beat. But a shepherd, guess what? There's usually 100 sheep or more. He can't always go around every single one of them, so he hollers at them. He says, all right, guys, follow me. It's time to move on. And those sheep will come running because they hear his voice. Guys, relationship. They... The Lord is my shepherd, and the name he uses here is Yahweh. First time we see Yahweh was with Moses in the wilderness. Remember the burning bush? And he says, hey, Moses, he says, I am. That's, that's by the way, that's what Yahweh means. Because remember, Moses, he gave every excuse he could think of to God for not following him. Oh, but, but God, you, you don't understand. I'm not a very good speaker. God says, I am. Well, God, I'm not a very good leader, but I am. We say, God, I'm not a very good Christian. God says, I am. Well, God, I'm not very smart. God says, I am. See, you don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to be intellectual. You don't have to be better or good enough. God says, I am. That's why David says, because Yahweh is, the great I am, everything I am not, he is. Isn't that awesome to think about? How many of you have some weaknesses in areas of your life? <laughs> Everybody ought to be raising your hand. We all do, don't we? Every single one of us, it may be different for every one of us, but every one of us has some areas of our life that we're weak in, that we're timid in, we're fearful in, we feel we don't measure up. But guess what? 
God says, I do. I've got this. You don't know the future? That's all right. I've got it. You're having economic problems? He says, that's all right. I can take care of that. You're having marital problems? He says, I can take care of that. You're having emotional problems like me this week? He says, I can be your strength and your consistency. See, when he is our shepherd, we have no need of anything. That's why the relationship is the most important part for the shepherd. See, when he is our shepherd, if we're not following him, guess what? It doesn't matter what he provides, does it? But he says, when we follow him and make him our shepherd, we have no need of anything in our life. David personalizes it. He says, not only is Yahweh the shepherd, he says, Yahweh is the shepherd. Have you made him shepherd of your life today? You know what I've discovered? In religious life, here's what we've done. We've almost separated this, and I, I, I think we've done a great injustice. I think maybe this is why Billy Graham and others believe half our church members are lost. is because we've almost made it where Jesus can be Savior of our life, but then at some point in life, we make him Lord of our life too, later on, as we grow and we mature. And I understand that. It definitely is a process, isn't it? And we grow in that. And it's like every day I'm learning there's other areas of my life I need to turn over to him and make him boss of. But guess what? Here's where I think we're missing it. At some point in our salvation experience, and I think at some point there at the beginning, we have to make the decision to make him boss of our life, give him control of our life. See, I don't think he can be savior of your life only and not Lord. I really don't. We want it that way because we want God to be our fire insurance. If God is just fire insurance to you and he's not your Lord and your master, we've got a problem. We've got a relationship problem, don't we? He is not an insurance policy that you can go by. It's a relationship. And any relationship if it's not growing, if you're not learning and spending time with that person, guess what? It's not going to be very good, is it? I remember when I was dating Jane, and she had a boyfriend back home. Yeah. Yeah. She could have money in Little Debbie's right now because he worked for Little Debbie. And he said, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to win you. I said, I'm going to have you saying, what's his name before long? You know what I had to do? I had to spend time with her, learning what her favorite color, favorite foods, all these different things that she liked and disliked. I had to learn her, not just about her, okay? That was a big difference, isn't it? See, we got a lot of people about God, but don't know God. And guys, that's a big difference. You can study the Bible and study all kinds of facts. You can look at history books and learn facts about God. But is he your Lord and Savior? Is he your shepherd? Is he the one that leads and guides your life daily? Or are we like so many? Well, I call on him on Sunday. Or when I get in trouble... It's what a lot of people do, isn't it? That's sad. God doesn't want that. He wants our relationship to be our number one priority because it's the most important thing. You're going to see everything in this psalm depends upon that. Okay? You know, I think of the... Oh, I'm going to spend too much time. I better move on. All right, number two... <laughs> He provides replenishment for us. He says, when we have a relationship with the shepherd, he will replenish us so that we can say, I shall not want. I have no need of anything else. See, left to themselves, sheep lack everything. They can't provide for themselves. They can't defend for themselves. Um, 
But with a good shepherd, they have everything that they need. Isn't that awesome? By themselves, they can do nothing. They can't provide, they can't defend. But with the shepherd, they have everything that they need. Why? Because he's the one that replenishes them. Um, if Jesus is our shepherd, then everything else is sec secondary. Um, if I am in want, and if there's things that I think I need in life, guess what? That means my relationship with God is faltering at some point. Think about that. If you are content, or if you are always occupied, well, I've got to have this. I've got to have this. Then that means your relationship with God is suffering at some point because now you've got to find fulfillment in that. And remember, she'd been with several other men, and the guy she was with, she was not married. Remember that song, country song, she was looking for love in all the wrong places? That's exactly what she said. She was looking for a relationship to fulfill her. Do you know there's people in this world that do that now? They look for relationships to fulfill them. We look for jobs or status to fulfill us. We look for possessions to fulfill us to give us importance or significance or meaning. Guys, if we have to find our significance, our fulfillment in anything other than God, then that means our relationship with Him is not all that it needs to be. Because when He is our shepherd, we have everything that we could ever need. Psalm 34, 9 says, Oh, fear the Lord, you... His saints, for those who fear Him have no lack. They don't need anything. I was reading one of the best definitions of contentment was this. It says, contentment is not having everything you've always wanted. You realize that? Think about that. To most people, they think, well, when I get to be content. Contentment is not having everything you want. But contentment is wanting everything you already have. It's wanting everything you already have. Do we want God that much? Do we want a relationship with Him that much? See, we can have revival anytime we want. You don't have to go to a meeting and catch it. You don't have to tune in to somebody. You don't have to listen to certain types of music and videos to have revival. You have much first time I heard a preacher about that like I said I was I was upset but when I discovered why you're saying He's saying, if you want more, then you need to put some work and some time and some effort into it. You need to spend time with Him. You need to get in His Word. You need to start praying. You need to follow the shepherd. See, want, man, if we spend our time trying to achieve all these things, wouldn't it be we wanted God as much as we want to? God wants to want Him. He wants us to want to be close to Him. He wants us to be desire Him and to get closer to Him. Number three, He provides rest. After providing us with a relationship and replenishment, He gives us rest. Look at verse two. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Sometimes sheep will eat and eat and eat until they gorge themselves. And I've discovered this. Sheep cannot digest food while they're out walking around and eating more. They have to rest before they can digest properly. And so the sheep, the shepherd, to pick them up and fold their legs that it would paralyze their legs. I didn't realize that. And he could paralyze their legs and then put them down. While that sheep is down, that sheep, oh yeah, this is what I need to be doing. I need to rest 
And then all of a sudden he starts digesting his food. You know what God showed me this week? I'm way too busy. Sometimes we equate busyness with holiness. It's not the same. Sometimes we need to be made to rest. When I was in seminary, my last year there, one of my best friends got married down in McAllen, Texas, all the way down there at that very bottom part of Texas in Fort Worth. Our last year of seminary, and during seminary, I was going to seminary full time, taking all my load of classes. I would get done with classes, and I was part of the time I was working as a security officer, and then part of the time I was driving trucks, semis all through Fort Worth and Dallas. And then I would get off at midnight on or seven o'clock Sunday morning and go to church. I was youth minister at church. I had no time. I mean, I was busy every single day. Jane and I were driving to this wedding where I'm the best man. And driving, I'm like, honey, I don't feel good. Something is wrong. By the time we stopped that night, I had a 105 degree fever, um, sweat, just, I thought spiders were crawling. I was hallucinating. I don't even remember the wedding. I was best man. I don't remember the rehearsal. I don't remember the wedding. pneumonia and here's what my doctor told me he asked me what I've been doing I told him my schedule he said well and I'll never forget this he says your body has to have rest and sometimes it will do what it needs to make you get rest guys I wonder is God forcing us to have some rest right now in America you know we're the only one of the only countries in the world that doesn't have siestas and naps and break times. And, you know, in Europe, you know how long most of them get for vacations? Like two months. We're lucky if we get two weeks, aren't we? They force them to take their vacations. We, as Americans, are so busy and don't get me wrong, we're, do, we're doing a lot of good things. But as Christians, you know what I've discovered? We can be busy doing all the good things and still miss out on what is best. God would much rather us slow down and spend time with him than to have our schedules full. A sheep had to be forced to take a rest. Isn't that something? And that rest is exactly what that sheep needed. He couldn't digest his food if he didn't rest. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Sometimes to have that rest, man, you got to have freedom from fear. If you emotional stress can be more fatiguing than physical stress, Boy, I have. <laughs> it can wear you out a whole lot more. Fear from, or freedom from fear. We give our fears to God. God wants to take care of them. Freedom from famine. If we're hungry all the time, if we're trusting God, guess what? We don't have to worry about all this and this and this and worry. Worry and fear steal our rest. Okay? After being fully fed, David writes, and then not only does he make me rest, they had to do that. Sheep, they're fearful of noises. Sometimes they'll stay away from fearful water, from rushing waters, but then sometimes they're curious, just like us, and they get in that rushing water and they get. Other times, they'll be walking along and there'll be a mud puddle and they'll start sheep can't handle the shepherd had to lead them to water that was good for them we're probably thinking of stories of our kids when we, how many times have we told our kids hey 
Trust me, I know that is not good for you. But don't we do the same thing to God? God, this is what I want, and I'm going for it. And God's saying, that's not good for you. I'm telling you, you don't need that. And then we get a bellyache. A spiritual bellyache is not good, is it? See, he doesn't lead us in anything that is wrong. Instead, he leads us to things that are good. He leads us to good water. So that fourth point, he provides restoration. He provides restoration. Because sheep are careless and curious and cantankerous, they often need to be restored. Because when we wander away and we don't follow the master, sometimes a sheep has to be disciplined. Have you ever been disciplined by God? <laughs> you know, we talk about God's woodshed. It is not fun. Every one of us, you've been disciplined. You may not have recognized it was discipline. You probably will be disciplined at other times in life. God disciplines his children. It's necessary. It's necessary. I don't know why we think discipline is contrary to God's love. I heard a preacher tell me this one time. He said, the reason we spank our children when they try to crawl under the sink where there's rat poison and liquid drain and all that, because guess what? If they drink that, it's going to kill them, right? So we will do whatever is necessary. If we have to spank them, we spank them, don't we? To teach them to stay away from that. God disciplines us not to hurt us. He doesn't get joy out of disciplining us. He does it to teach us that that's not good for you. That's going to be harmful. Guys, discipline is love. It is love. The Bible even says it. It goes on and says that if a father does not discipline his children, does not love them. James Dobson one time, and I don't remember, but it was another serial killer who was in prison by the time he was 18. He, James Dobson was interviewing him, and James Dobson said this. This boy said, well, my parents loved me more than they loved the dog. And he said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, because the dog would get out in the street and they would spank the dog because they didn't want the dog to get ran over by a car. He said, I was gone for weeks at a time and my parents never even asked where I was, never grounded me. Guys, we think we're doing our kids a favor. We think we're becoming their buddy when we don't discipline. They, need to, they want to know the boundaries. They want to know that you've got their back and that they care for them. They may tell you different and they may even think that for a while. But it is security, okay? Restoration. David knew about restoration. He needed restoration, didn't he? David had murder and adultery. Even though David did those things that most of us, God still loved. Restore my soul. Whew. How many of you need your soul restored? Man, we all have times we do, don't we? I've needed my soul restored this week. You know what? I've got somebody that can do that. Because I can't. But I know somebody that can. Shepherd. He's my shepherd. So what a picture that God paints for us. Um, man, he loves us. In fact, he loves us so much, the Bible tells us he'll leave the 99. Come look for us. He looks for us. And a sheep, when he goes off and he wanders off, a lot of times he will get into a ditch, he'll fall, and he'll get off balance. And because there's so much wool and stuff up on him, you know what happens when they get off balance and they fall down? Their feet get stuck up in the air and they can't find their way to get on their feet. And when they get on their back, then they start panicking. And all the gases and stuff start swelling up inside of them. And they can die within just a matter of a couple of it's called being cast or cast down. You've seen the scripture that says, why, oh, my soul, are you cast down or downcast? This is what it's talking about. It means we get into a state that we are helpless and we start panicking and we can't do anything about it. So anytime a shepherd lost the she the she or a sheep, the shepherd almost automatically thinks, uh-oh, he's trapped and he can't get up. 
I need to go rescue him. Man, aren't you glad we have God who comes and rescues us? He rescues us. He helps us when we get down. And we all get down. We all get in panic situations. We all get where we wander off from him. Then number five, he leads me for his namesake in paths of righteousness. See, we're the ones that wander off. We're the ones that get ourselves in trouble, aren't we? It's never God's fault. I don't know why we want to blame God all the time. But after he restores us, now he leads us on the right path. He said, you wandered off that way. I hope you discovered that's bad. I'll go there again. But here's where you need to go. Here's the way that you should go. He sends us in the right direction. Guys, that's what his word is about. That's why we... So the right make. That's why we want to recognize his voice. So that we will go the right way. And then I love that he feeds us and restores us. Why? For his namesake, for his reputation. Do you think God's concerned about his reputation? He wants his name to be glorified, doesn't he? He doesn't want his people being a disgrace to him. He does all these things for his righteousness, for his name's sake. See, if we want the calm of this psalm, we've got to be one of his sheep and make him our shepherd because he provides everything that we can ever need. While every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm of invitation here in just a second. Guys, this is not just to a lost person. This is to us as believers. We can get downcast. We can get to a point we have to be forced to rest, where we have to be led beside quiet waters and good waters that are good for us. We all have times that we've wandered off and we need discipline. We were talking this morning about failures. Failure is inevitable. We're all going to fail. The question is, are we learning and growing from it? If we keep repeating them, then it's not done as any good. Guys, and about want. Do we want God as much as we want other things in this life? If not, even us as believers, we need to make Him Lord and master and shepherd of our life. Make sure he's not just fire insurance. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for being good to us. And Father, I pray for those that are here and those that are listening to us online. Father, I pray that you would help us to find calm in all this chaos and realize our calm comes because you are in control. You are in control of our life. We have given ourselves to you. We have made you our shepherd. Father, help us to want you above all. Help us to work on having a relationship with you as much as we work, in fact, more than we work on anything else in this world because it's temporary. It fails. But you never fail. You always want the best for us. We can trust you. Father, help us to come to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right.